In life and in death, we give glory. Uh, hello? With Resident Evil Village, one of the most highly anticipated games of the next few months, and even this entire year, for those who can stomach horror games anyway, gamers have been poring over every detail they can possibly get their hands on. Two Resident Evil showcases have celebrated the upcoming game and the series' 25th anniversary, and we're now onto the second FOMO-inducing gameplay demo for Village. But I think it's safe to say that everyone was left scratching their heads about what the technical specs released meant for the game running on a variety of different games consoles. From running at 900p at 30fps on the base Xbox One, up to a full 4K at 60fps on PS5 and Xbox Series X, Resident Evil Village is catering to a whole host of games consoles, and it includes options on many of them to prioritise performance or visuals. It's with the introduction of ray tracing on the new generation systems that we were left a bit befuddled. What on earth does 4K at 45fps mean? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? As a quick refresher, frame rates typically boils down to multiples of 30. LCD TVs and computer monitors often have a refresh rate of 60Hz, and if a game isn't running at 30fps or 60fps, even for a moment, then frames are duplicated, screen tearing is introduced with partial frames and an ugly split across the screen, and potentially there's just this bad and juddering experience. Some people can prefer to have this unlocked frame rate, with something between 30 and 60 FPS more responsive to your inputs than a game that is locked at 30 FPS. And there's also a new technology called Variable Refresh Rate, which has the screen matching the output of the game instead of the other way around. You also have higher refresh rate screens, most commonly targeting 120Hz, but potentially going much, much higher. So, with 45 FPS, unless you have VRR enabled, which you can do on the Xbox Series X with a compatible screen, but cannot currently do on PlayStation 5, the worry was that this was going to be a juddering eyesore. Thankfully, I'm here to tell you that from the Resident Evil Village gameplay demo set in the village, you don't really need to worry too much. The non-ray tracing mode is absolutely locked to 60fps from what we can see, while the 45fps label for ray tracing seems to mainly indicate that the frame rate is not guaranteed to be 60. Ray tracing mode is actually very often much closer to a solid 60fps than it is to a wobbly 45fps. But I'm not going to pretend it is perfect, and even just wandering through the village area sees frames drop sporadically into the high 50s. A little bit worse, as soon as you engage with just a single enemy in the wheat field, it's hovering in the low to mid 50s. By comparison, the 4K60 mode is just a flat line. However, a frame rate in the 50s does still give a good experience, so long as you're not too sensitive to this issue. We would expect that, as and when Capcom throw some busier scenes and set pieces into the game with more enemies, the frame rate will drop further to 45 FPS and maybe even below that point. So the choice is there for you whether you want to go for the perfectly reliable 60 FPS or accept that the frame rate will be a bit variable. So it is looking good for being able to play with ray tracing turned on on PS5, but it still feels pretty daft that this is the only setting here. It would still be better to have the option to run the game at, for example, 1440p with ray tracing and have it locked to 60fps. This is something that was patched into Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS5. Alternatively, you could have the option to have 4K ray tracing and lock it to 30fps for those that want to have that absolute consistency and aren't too fussed with the higher frame rate. Personally, I also feel that the difference between ray tracing and non-ray tracing is also just very, very slight to notice when you look at the game. It's all about the accuracy of the shadowing and lighting, about things like ambient occlusion as opposed to having flashy reflections in mirrors and the sides of skyscrapers. And in general, it feels like Resident Evil Village's design is catering towards looking good on the last gen systems with ray tracing as an added bonus for the new generation. So there you go, 4K60 on PS5 is great with this game, and ray tracing is surprisingly pretty close to great as well. The 45fps really does not tell the whole story. That's all that we've got for this video, and hopefully you found it informative for all of your graphics mode choices when it comes to Resident Evil Village coming up in the next few weeks and months. Before you go, make sure to do the usual YouTube things, like, subscribe, the usual stuff, and hopefully we will see you again soon. Goodbye!